Welcome to part 3 of this tutorial series where we're creating this birdhouse animation in Blender. If you haven't seen part 1 and part 2 then you can check those out with the link in the description. And in this part we're going to be creating the small branches and the leaves and place those around the scene. So let's get started by just hiding everything so that it's out of the way. So I'll select everything and I can just press the H key to hide it. So I'm going to press Shift C to center the 3D cursor and then let's go to the add menu. I want to start by adding a plane. So then on this plane we're going to be adding the leaf texture. So I'm going to click right over here to the shading workspace and I'm going to go here to the top and I'm actually going to go down into the material preview so we can see the texture better. So let's now add a new material and I can just rename this to leaves. And then earlier on in this tutorial we turned on the node wrangler add-on in Blender's user preferences. So because we have the node wrangler enabled I can select the principal shader and I can press Control shift t so in the first part of this tutorial series, I mentioned the leaf texture that I'm going to be using. So you can download that free texture from Ambient CG with the link in the description. And I downloaded the 2K JPEG version of these textures. So you can extract the zip file and then go into the folder and here's all the textures. And so I want to select the roughness and then hold down the control key. And I want to select the opacity and also the normal GL and the color. So those four images and I can click on principal texture setup and you can see it's automatically set up all the textures for us and if I go into the rendered view you can see the leaves have the transparency so I'm going to go back to the material preview and I'm going to go to top view so I now want to cut out the leaves and you can cut out as many as you want if you want to you can just cut out one leaf I'm going to be cutting out four leaves so that there's a little bit of variation so the leaves look different but that way I won't have to cut out all of the leaves so I'm going to select the object and we'll go into edit mode I'll just zoom into one of the leaves I think this one one looks pretty nice and then I will hit the K button for the knife tool I'm gonna click up here and then I'm just gonna start to cut this out so I do want this to be pretty low poly because we're gonna have lots of leaves so I'm just gonna go along here and just click with the knife tool and I'm gonna go along here and cut out the leaf and once I get down here I can click down click over and then back up and then I can just click over here at another one we're just cutting into that face and then I can finish this off by going up there. Click there, then you could hit the enter button and that is going to cut into those faces. So then if you go to the face select, you can select the face here and you can press the P button and we can just separate this by selection. So back into object mode, I can move this leaf over. So we wanna do that for a few more leaves. I'm just gonna do four leaves. So I'll go back into edit mode. I can zoom in here. I can use the knife tool. I can click down here and then I can drag up here and then just start to go over and again, I do want this to be somewhat low poly so that's why I'm having these big areas I'm not cutting around very closely because I want to keep the topology pretty low because we are going to be duplicating the leaves and having many leaves in the scene click there and hit enter then I can just select this face and I can separate it by selection go back to object mode and I can move this one over here let's do a few more so I think this one is kind of cool with these little cracked areas there so again hit K for the knife tool click here and I can just go along and it's okay that you're not very close to the leaf because the black area that is actually going to be transparent and that way it'll make the edge look nice and crisp and it'll give it all that detail but the edge of the leaf will have some transparency click and down and then hit enter select this face hit P we're going to separate by selection and then we can go to object mode and move this over here and then I will just do one more so I think this one's kind of nice here so I'll use the knife tool again click there go up and over and over here keeping it pretty low poly I don't mind if it's very chunky because of the transparency it'll give it more detail go down there and hit enter I can click on that one P separate by selection and I can bring this over so if you want to do all of them you can and have a lot of variation and make each leaf look different but I'm just going to do four I think that is fine so I can just delete the other leaves so I can select these and bring them over into the center and then with all of the leaves selected I'm now going to press Control J so that they're all one object again and it looks like we have the proportional editing on so if you have the proportional editing on just turn it off with that button right there so I'm now going to go back into edit mode and I want to add some edges which are going back and forth and that way we can rotate the leaves and make them look a bit 3d so again I'll hit the K for the knife tool I can click here and then I can just find another one on the other side and click there and then hit enter and I can do that a few more times so use the knife tool 
go like that. And I'm just going to do that a couple times on each leaf. So maybe two or three cuts going back and forth. And this way we'll be able to rotate the leaves and they will look like they're a bit rotated and look a bit more 3D because right now they're very flat. And then this last one here, using the knife tool, cutting a loop there, cutting a loop right there. And if you wanted to, you could even do another one down here and match that up there. So now what I can do is I can select the center faces. So you can hold down the shift key and select the center faces and I can bring them up on the Z axis. And in edit mode, we have the proportional editing turned on. So if you want to, you can press the O key to turn that on and off. I'm gonna leave it off. And then also I can go here to the edge select. I can select this edge and kind of bring it up. And this way the leaves are just gonna be a bit rotated it over. So now they look a little bit more three-dimensional. And if you go back to object mode and go into the rendered view, you can see the leaves actually look pretty nice on the edge because of that transparency. So even though they look weird right here, they look kind of low poly, they actually look much more detailed because of that transparency. So the edges are nice and crisp. And then if you select the object, let's shade it smooth using the object context menu so it looks nice and smooth. So now in object mode, I wanna select the leaves and I wanna scale these way down to like a 0.1, just scale them much smaller because they're actually pretty big. And then I can go to top view and I can move these into the center. And then I wanna apply the scale. So I'll just press control A and apply the scale. So this is now the object's new default size. And let's go into the rendered view because I wanna see the material and we're gonna be editing the material a little bit. So I'm still in the shading tab. So I have the shader editor right here. So the first thing that I want to do is edit the colors so that the leaves are a bit more green and a bit darker. So let's go here and add the RGB curves. I want to drop it after the base color. And then here on the C, I can drag this down. This will make all the colors darker. I can also hit the G and then I can bring this up and I want to make there be a bit more green. Then I also want to add some subsurface scattering so it looks like light is going through the leaves. So here on the subsurface, I'll turn this up to like a 0.2. And then here on the subsurface color, I want to make this kind of like a dark green. So just something like that. And now if you look here on the bottom, you can see some of the light is going through. It is a bit hard to see because there's not any really strong light, but there is a little bit of light going through the objects. And then also if you click here on the subsurface radius, this is going to be the red, green, and blue values. And I believe on default, the subsurface radius is set to work well for skin because this one is R for red. And so if the red value are higher that's going to look more like skin but I want the subsurface radius to all be the same values so I'll click here on the subsurface the subsurface radius I can click and then drag down and I'll change all of these to a 0.54 so I think that looks pretty good and I think that looks a bit better for leaves so let's now go back here to the layout and we're going to be creating the branches so I'll go to top view and then let's go to the add menu we're going to add a cylinder and I can zoom out here the cylinder is really big and I I want the cylinder to be pretty low poly because we are going to be having many of these. So right behind me, right after you add the cylinder, you can open up the add cylinder settings and let's just turn the vertices to six. So it is much more low poly. And then I can scale this way down and we're going to make these much smaller because these are going to be some small branches. So just make that really small. And I can bring it over here and I also want to rotate it. I'll rotate it by 90 degrees on the X axis and I can go to top view. I can also just press Control A and I'll apply the scale. So this is the object's new default size. So let's now go into edit mode and I'm going to bring this back here and then I'll go into wireframe and I'm just going to go to the vertex select. I'll just deselect everything and then I'll just box select the top here and I'm going to bring it out. I'm also going to select everything and maybe scale it up a little bit. We're going to start to model the tree branch. So I'll box select this again and we will extrude this out and we can scale it down. And as we extrude out the branch, I want to make it slowly getting smaller and smaller. So I'll extrude this out again, kind of rotate it over and kind of make it kind of random. And you can definitely look at reference images of tree branches to get it more accurate. So I'm just kind of extruding this out, scaling it down, having it a bit random and just making a nice little tree branch. So now what I can do is I can box select one of the branches here. I will duplicate it and I can rotate it around. Just kind of rotate it maybe like this, maybe scale it down. And I want to stick this right in there. So stick it in the branch and I can go back to solid view. And I just want to bring this up and make sure it's connecting into the branch. I can also just select that loop of vertices. So that loop of vertices right there. And I can scale it down and stick it in the branch. And then just deselect everything. I can go back to wireframe and I can just kind of rotate this and I want to just make the branches kind of random. And then at the end of the branches, we're going to be adding all the leaves. So let's do some more. So I'm just going to box select 
like this part here. I will duplicate it, rotate it over, and maybe just stick it right there. Box select this part here, and I can just extrude this out and scale it down. So this is just very simple modeling, just making those branches. I might select this and bring this out, duplicate it and stick it there, and extrude out a few more of the branches kind of rotate it around and I am keeping it somewhat low poly if you want to you can add loop cuts and make it a bit more round but because we're going to be duplicating these and having a lot of them I do want to keep the topology as low as possible just so that the scene doesn't get too dense but if you want to if there are any sharp areas like kind of like right here I can add a loop cut and then just rotate this so that it rotates a bit more smooth so I'm just going to box select this extrude that out there scale that down a bit and then I can select this here duplicate it, scale it down, and just continue to finish the branches. All right, so I've just continued to do that and I've just made a few different branches coming out here. I also like just took this one here and duplicated it and put it over here. And then one thing that I wanna make sure is I wanna make sure the branches are going into each other. So to see this better, you can press the five on the numpad to go to orthographic view. You can kind of zoom in and you can just select the loops and kind of scale them down. I just wanna make sure all the branches are going into each other. So if there are any branches which are kind of coming outside of each other you can move those around uh, but that is looking pretty good so just a very simple branch you don't need to make anything too complex now I do want this to be a bit more three-dimensional so I'm gonna go back to wireframe and I'll go here on side view and I'm gonna start by just selecting this back part here and I'm gonna rotate it and move it up I can also select this here rotate it and bring it up and I'm just gonna continue to do that because I want the branch to be kind of rotating down so I'll bring this up a bit more I can also select this here and extrude it up and kind of rotate it maybe scale it up a little bit and then I can also select Select this part right here and I want to press the O key to turn on the proportional editing and that way the other vertices are going to move along with it and I can go back to side view and I'm going to kind of rotate this down so I want the branch to kind of start up here and then go down and this way when we add it into the 3d scene this can be outside of the camera view and then we'll just have the branches going into the camera view so something like that I can also box select that right there and I can rotate this around and I need to scroll my mouse wheel down and maybe rotate that down you can also select some of the branches and also rotate them up just try to make it nice and three-dimensional and you can see some of the branches now have gotten out of the larger branch so if that happens you can just select that loop and then I want to turn off the proportional editing and I'm going to zoom in here and just bring that up and I want to stick it in the branch there and I'll select that there and also stick it in the branch. So I now want to join these two objects together. So I'll first select the branch and then select the leaves and we can join it together with Control J. So I can now go into edit mode and we can place all of the leaves. So you can use the L key to select the linked vertices so it'll select the entire leaf. And I'm gonna to go to top view and kind of rotate this over, maybe scale this leaf down. And so I wanna have some variation in each leaf. So I want some leaves to be kind of pointed down, some leaves to be bigger and smaller. And I'm just gonna place all of the leaves on the branches. So this is pretty easy to do, but it does take a little bit of time. And if you want to, you can go into the material preview. I am gonna do that because that's a bit easier to see. And you can see see that the branch right now has the leaf material so what we can actually do is we can go right over here to the material properties and then using the L key I'm just going to select all the linked vertices so we're going to select all the branches and then we just want to add a material to this so let's add a new material in the slot let's add a new material and I can call this branch and then with the branch selected we'll just assign that so now it has the branch material I also left out a spot there so that one there and assign that material and then Later on, we're going to be creating a very simple procedural material for the branches. So I can deselect everything again, and we're just going to select some of the leaves. I'll go to top view, and I can just scale the leaves and rotate them over, and just put them on the branch and bring that down there. And then what you can do is just select some part of the leaf, but not all of it. And you can kind of rotate this just to give a little bit of variation. Let's select this leaf here, and I'll go to top view, just rotate this over. We're just gonna to continue to add lots of leaves. So I will skip through this. I'm not gonna show you the entire process, but it is really quite simple. Just putting a few more leaves on here. So putting that there, and this one I could maybe rotate down a little bit. So I'll rotate that down. And then a few other things you can do, if you wanna add a little bit more variation, when you duplicate a leaf, you can scale it and you can scale it down and you can type in negative one and that way it's gonna be reversed. So now it looks a little bit different. It still is the same texture, but it looks a bit more unique. 
and I'm just going to bring this down. I could also scale this one down so that some leaves are a little bit smaller. So I'm just going to continue to do this for the rest of the branch. And I have finished placing all my leaves. So roughly I've placed about 20 leaves if you're looking for a number that I've used, but just kind of get a nice amount of leaves. Something like this will be great. So now using the object context menu, I can shade this object smooth. So everything is smooth. So let's now select the object. We'll go over to shading and right over here on the side panel, I want to make sure I select the branch. So for the branch material, we're going to be creating a very simple procedural setup and it's going to be a white bark similar to the bark that we used for the tree trunk. So let's start just by adding a noise texture. I'll drop this here and I can preview it. I can also go into rendered mode just to see this better. I'll kind of zoom in here. And then with the noise texture selected, you can press control T for the texture coordinate and mapping. And I want to use the object coordinates. And let's change some of the noise texture settings. So I'm going to turn the scale up to like 50 so you can see that a bit better. I'm also going to turn the detail all the way up and I'll turn the roughness up a little bit to like a 0.55. And then I want to put this into the bump so the bark looks bumpy. So let's put the factor into the normal. And then we also want to add a bump node to convert it to normal data. And we want the noise texture to be going into the height. So I can now preview the principal shader and you can see it now looks nice and bumpy. And I'll turn the strength down to just like a 0.5 here on the bump so it's not quite as strong. That's a bit better. And then I want to put this into the color as well. So we'll put the factor into the base color. And to control the colors better, I'm going to add a color ramp. So let's put the color ramp between the noise texture and the principal shader. And then we can drag these values around and we can make it more contrasty. So I'm going to drag the black tab down there and I'll drag the white tab over a little bit. But then this this black tab I'm going to click on the color and I'm just going to make this kind of like a mid gray color so now we just have this nice white and gray bark and I'll also turn the roughness up a little bit to maybe like a 0.7 so it's a bit more rough all right so let's go back here to the layout and I'll unhide everything with alt h and it's a little bit laggy in the viewport because of those procedural materials. So I'll go back to solid view. Now there is one thing that I actually forgot to do with this wood material. So real quick, I'm going to select one of these wood materials and I'm going to go to the shading tab and we'll go into rendered mode and I'm just going to zoom into the wood. And you can see right up here, we have this noise texture, but we don't have the object coordinates plugged into this noise texture. And so why this is a problem is because if I control shift and select the color ramp here to preview the noise texture, you can see there are some objects where the noise is being stretched like right here. And so I want to use the object coordinates. So I want to drag the texture coordinate back and we want to take the object here and we want to put that into the vector of the noise texture. And this way the noise will be more evenly placed all around the textures. You can see there isn't any stretching there on that perk. And I also want to change the scale now that we've used the object coordinates. So I think I'll turn the scale up to like a 10. That looks a bit better. And then I need to do the same thing for the other object. So I'm going to control shift and select the principal shader. And then let's click on the dark wood material. And I just want to do the same thing. So we can drag the texture coordinate back. I want to use the object coordinates. So let's put that into the vector of the noise texture. And I can preview that color ramp. And that looks a bit better. It's not so stretched. But then I want to take the scale and turn that up a bit. So I'll turn it to like a 10. That is a bit better. You could turn it up more if you want to. But I'm just going to go back here and preview the principal shader. So that looks a little bit better. All right, so we're now going to be placing the branches in the scene. So here's the branch. I'm just going to select this and let's actually go back here to the layout. So what I'm going to do is actually split the window. So if I click right here in the corner, I can drag this over and then right over here, I'll go into the camera view and I'll just make this really small and I'm going to go into the rendered view just so I can see what the camera is actually seeing. So I can then select the branch here and I can move it over and I'm going to start by going to top view and I'm going to rotate the branch over and we're going to start to place the branches. So I'm going to start by bringing the branch over here, kind of rotate this around and I do want to scale it up a bit and then I can go here to the side and I want to rotate it over and I'm looking over here to see how the branch is showing up in the camera view. So you can double tap the R key to rotate it around and just bring it over and I want to start to put some branches kind of in the background to make it look like it's in kind of like a dense forest and there are lots of trees around. Now because we're going to be duplicating this many times, instead of pressing Shift D, 
I can press Alt D and that way the objects will keep the same data and so it'll keep the file size lower and Blender will render the scene more easily because these objects are going to be keeping the same object data. If I go into edit mode and I move some of the object around, you can see it's basically a duplicate so it's kind of a copy of the same object. So that way they have the same object data. So I can bring this over here. I want to make another one. You can see I'm placing it right here so the camera can kind of see it in the background, but it is kind of blurred. And then remember to press Alt D and kind of rotate this over. We can bring this up and Alt D again. And then also if you want to, to make it look a bit more unique, you can scale this. I'll scale it on the X axis. And again, you can type in negative one, just like how we flip the leaves. You can flip the entire branch so it looks a little bit different. And if you want to, if you want to make some branches which look a little bit different, you can press Shift D to duplicate it. And then you can go into edit mode and kind of adjust the shape of the branches to make it look a bit more unique. But I don't really need to do that because I just have a few branches here and there in the background. So I'm just going to use Alt D instead. And I'm just kind of rotating this around, just kind of making a clump of branches. And duplicate that one more time, or rotate this over so it's kind of coming into the scene. Maybe scale this up a bit. I'm just going to add a few more layers of branches just so that there's a few more leaves in the scene. All right, and just a few more here and there. And you can see there's kind of a patch down there. So I'll duplicate this again, rotate this over, and just fill that little patch there. That is looking pretty nice. So I'll press Alt D again. Let's bring this over here. And I wanna scale this down and I wanna have some more branches, but these branches are gonna be closer to the birdhouse. So I'm first gonna have one branch, which is actually really close to the birdhouse. And it's actually gonna be going in front of the birdhouse a little bit. So if I just drag this over so you can see the camera better, also drag this over here to make it really small. I wanna rotate this over and kind of put it in front of the birdhouse. And because the camera is focusing on the birdhouse, you're also going to be able to see those leaves and they're not going to be blurred. And I think I'll bring this a bit more forward and bring it down a little bit. And I will duplicate this one again. Now let's rotate this over and I want to have another one which is kind of right over here. So you can see the camera is focusing where that empty is. So anything which is that far away from the camera, it's going to be in focus. Kind of stick it right here so it's kind of coming into the side of the seam. That looks pretty good. Maybe scale this up, stick it right there. And I do think it's nice if there's a little bit of leaves overlapping because it makes the birdhouse look like it's way back in there in a thicket of trees. So I'll duplicate this again. Let's put another one behind the birdhouse. I can kind of rotate this down, kind of rotate this over just like that. Maybe scale it up a little bit. It. And I'll add another one. This one I'm going to rotate over and this one is going to be kind of on the top. So above the birdhouse. So I'll rotate that over, maybe bring it back a little bit. And maybe I'll select this one here and I'll duplicate another one. And this one I can maybe invert. So I'll just scale this down, type in negative one to flip it over. And I can just rotate this one. And this one I'm going to kind of just stick in the corner. Now I want to make the back of the scene look even more dense. So I'm just going to box select these here. So box select all these. Just make sure that those ones are selected. And again, I will duplicate this and kind of bring it back here. We're going to rotate this over and I want to stick this in the background just to make it look very dense so that it looks like there's lots of branches all around and we're in a thick forest. And I'm looking at the camera view to kind of see how this is looking, kind of moving some of these around. I can even scale these up and if I scale them up then the leaves are going to be a bit bigger so they're going to cover more space. All right so I'm going to do a few more things just to kind of fix the scene and make it look really nice. So one thing that I want to do is these front leaves. I want to make them a bit bigger just because I think they're a little bit small. And I also might duplicate one of these and I want to put one kind of right here to fill that space there in that corner there and also this one here I think I might scale this up a little bit bigger but really it just needs to look nice in the camera view all right so I'm gonna call that good for the leaves so there's still one more thing that I want to do in this part and that is that I want to create a shadow and so we're basically gonna create a shadow object which is up here so then the light will shine through the shadow object and it'll make it look like there's many leaves above here and there's more trees higher up so to do this, I want to first close this window here. So here I can click, drag over, and then let go just to close that. So let's now add the other object. 
So I'll go to the add menu and I'm going to add a circle and I'll bring the circle up and I'm actually going to bring it over here just so that it's out of the way. And I can go to top view and I'm now going to zoom in here and I will go into edit mode. So I'm now going to extrude the vertices and then scale the vertices and then I do that again. So place that there, extrude the vertices and scale the vertices, bring that down. And I'm just going to continue to do that many times. So extruding the vertices and then scaling the vertices. And I want to make this very small just like that. And then I can fill this with the F key. So now what I want to do is just delete some of the random faces. So with everything deselected, I'm going to go here to the face select. And then now that I'm in the face select, I can click on select and I'm going to select random. And this way it's going to select some random faces. And then I can delete this and let's delete the faces. So now you can see there's some little open areas. And I can also just manually select some faces. I'll delete that. Maybe select this face and delete that and this one here. And also maybe select these and delete that. And I just want to have a few open areas which the light can shine through. So I'll now go back to object mode. And then in object mode, I can add a subsurf with control 2. So now you can see it looks a bit more smooth on the edges. And then also if you want to you can select a few more faces like I might select this one and delete that and I might also select this one and delete that. All right so I can now rotate this over and bring it over here and then I can go up into the rendered view. And just to visualize this a bit better I can select the sunlight and I can move it up. It doesn't actually matter where the sunlight is it just matters the rotation but I'm just going to move this up here above this object. So now if I select this object and move it around, you can see that there's little patchy shadows and so it looks like there are trees higher up with some big branches and leaves and it looks like the sunlight is shining through those trees. Now with this object selected, I also want to add a material to it. So let's click new here to add a new material and I can just call this like shadow. And then I want to change the type of material. So on the surface here, let's go down here and I'm going to change it to the translucent. So this way it'll allow a little bit of light to go through. And then here on the color, let's make this a green color and a little bit darker. So something like that. And I can kind of scale this up and you can see that now the shadows are looking a little bit green. And so it looks like there's leaves higher up, which the sun is shining through. And to get a bit more detail, I actually think I want to scale this down a bit. So then I want to go back into edit mode of this object and I'll go back to solid view and I want to duplicate the vertices and kind of put them around so that the entire scene has that shadow. So I will duplicate this, kind of rotate that over and I'm doing this in edit mode so it's all one object and I can duplicate this again, rotate this around, just kind of make it random rotate it like that. I can select everything and duplicate it again. Maybe rotate this around, stick it there, just kind of have it overlap. So rotate this down and I can go back to object mode and bring this up a little bit higher. And we'll go back into edit mode and duplicate this, kind of rotate it, stick it right there. And then use the L key to select some of the linked vertices. And I can duplicate this, kind of rotate some pieces over and duplicate this and rotate that over. So that is probably a good size. You won't really need anything bigger. I can also select everything and scale it down on the Z so that it's a bit more flat. So now if I go up into the rendered view, I can just rotate this over and I just wanna make sure that most of the scene is covered by that shadow. And if I kind of move this back and forth, if you look at the tree trunks, you can kind of see how that is looking. So I actually wanna move it over here and scale it up a little bit because I want it to be over the birdhouse. And then if I go into the camera view, you can see it's being covered by that shadow. So I can just move this around with the G key, move that around, and I want the front of the birdhouse to be out of a shadow so you can see it better. But now you can see if I move this around, it looks like there's some leaves kind of blowing around and the sun is shining through it. All right, so this is going to wrap it up for part three of the tutorial series. So I hope you've been enjoying this and thank you for watching. And so in the last part in part four, we're going to go over the render settings, we'll render the final scene and then do the compositing, and then we're also going to be doing the animation. And then we'll render that out and compile the frames together to the finished video. So when part four is released, it's going to be right up there on the end screen and also the link will be in the description. So I hope you enjoyed this, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the last part.